turns out that practicing a musical instrument or practicing music in general might be the most difficult thing and most challenging thing a human brain can do because you're integrating sensory, fine motor, gross motor, you're holding your instrument, you're moving your fingers, you're doing all these incredible things and it's driving your brain to do incredible things that are re rewiring it uh, to get to the point where you can actually become a Grammy nominated musician. tell you, those Grammy-nominated uh, musicians uh, have been practicing music for a long time. And practicing a musical instrument or even practicing to sing can have all sorts of effects on the brain. It can actually make new nerve cells, possibly. We think of actually this process called neurogenesis, where new nerve cells are made, is one thing that can happen. Another thing that can happen is the nerve cells that are there make new connections. We call those synapses. And then a third thing, which actually I study in my lab, is Music practice may actually generate new myelin, a substance that wraps around some of those nerve cells and increases how quickly they, they actually process information. So this is an amazing thing that our brain is doing. It's rewiring itself and remaking itself every time we practice music. Practicing a musical instrument has far more benefit than just listening to music. However, listening to music it actually has its own benefits as well. We're doing a lot of things in our brain when we're processing information that's coming at us in a new song or a new kind of music. And when we're learning to appreciate new kinds of music, we probably are doing some rewiring. So that's, there's definitely some benefit to just listening. People who perform in groups have some interesting benefits that uh, people who perform by themselves or who are singing in the shower have. So, for example, it turns out that if you're in a group of musicians in a choir, one of the things that happens is we release a, a chemical substance called endorphins and another one called dopamine. And the two of these together actually can make you feel more accepted in a group. It can actually make you relieve pain while you're, while you're engaged in that activity. It has all sorts of amazing properties, but that acceptance within the group and willingness to tolerate each other in big ways, it's an incredible effect. And I always tell people, if only we could get Congress to sing. There are good studies suggesting that there are medical benefits to music. I mean, first of all, it's clear that musical education, especially at a young age, is really helpful. I think there's, there's no doubt in my mind that that's the case. But there's growing evidence that music therapy can really help people who have had brain injuries, for example, from strokes or trauma. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, for example, had lost the ability to initiate speech, and with music therapy, she was able to regain that, which is really amazing. And then finally, there's growing evidence that, in fact, if you are musical and pushing yourself to really try new things in your musical exploits, like learning to play a piano at age 70, it may actually help you with old, during old age to start, you know, restore your brain or actually prevent your brain from becoming more, more aged and, and less functional. And young people, I think, who are really pushing themselves may actually give you something. We, we have this idea of reserve, cognitive reserve, right? So we, we may be able to actually structure our brains in a way through things like music practice that will give us more to lose, basically, as we get older. And so that's another thing. We can, we can actually prevent the things that happen in old age from happening sometimes when we do more as young people to challenge our brains with things like music. In terms of the music that we practice or engage with, it probably doesn't matter, so long as it's a challenge to you. I think that's the key. Um, there are certain types of music course that are going to be better for sleeping than others. You probably don't want to be listening to something with a really great beat that makes you want to get up and dance when you're trying to go to bed. Uh, you probably don't want to listen to something that has great lyrics that you want to sing along to when you're trying to work on something. Uh, so I think depending on what, you, what you're doing, the music you listen to is going to be different. The music you practice though, the music you engage with, if it's challenging, it's going to benefit you. I think the kind of music you play is, is up to you. You're going to be more motivated to learn music if you like the music you're playing, for sure. And so a good music learner knows what they want to do, and a good music teacher, I think, is going to be willing to work with you to work with the music that is going to motivate you to play more.